But he don't mind. Hey, girl! What's going on? Hey! <laughs> you, you remember on the news that them boys walking across Tennessee? You remember them three boys going to walk across Tennessee? That's them. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, hey, hey man. Uh, my name is Dennis Humphreys, but they call me Killer. Right. Everybody in Lauderdale County know me as Killer. And y'all, right now, y'all in a community, community of Curve, which is called Curve. Yeah. And like I say, Taylor Turner was born in Woodville, which is about three miles from here. So, so, so y'all, y'all the end got introduced to the killer. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they call you killer? Well, I used to box. I, actually, I used to box, and I broke a board jaw. All right. And with this hand here, they, they called me killer ever since. So <laughs> that's how I got the name killer. You know, but uh, but y'all doing a good deed, man. And next time y'all do it. Bene do it for benefit, like, like keep kids off of drugs or do it, do it for a better reason. Place of just walking across Tennessee for no reason. You know, do it, you know, do it for AIDS or cancer or y'all doing a real good job. I'm proud of you. I'm old enough for all y'all data, but I'm proud of you. Next time we're going to do it for the cause, but I won't be walking with you though. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, you want to say? Yeah. In the fall of 2013, Two friends of mine and I put on backpacks and left Memphis on foot. Our goal was simply to walk across the state of Tennessee, exploring the many rural parts of the state we had never seen. We took back roads and highways and occasionally dirt roads. We often slept off the side of the road. At the end of each day, we'd duck off into a stand of trees or the edge of a field to hide from cars and set up camp. Sometimes people would approach us and ask what we were doing. A lot of times those people would give us water or food. A number of them even invited us into their homes and gave us a bed or a couch or a floor to sleep on. We walked more than a thousand miles over a period of 12 weeks. We brought a camera along with us and documented the people and the places we saw. Just Memphis walking roads. We walked about a thousand miles to get here. You've been taking pictures. Yeah, yeah. We've been um, we're making a film, so we've been shooting stuff along the way. Yeah, sure. Let's see. What's your name, man? Blake Philippi. Blake Philippi. I'm Tim. Uh, are you going? Uh, uh, will you put it in the newspaper? Uh, how do you do it? Kim, Rob, and uh, Blake. All right, well, great to meet y'all. Yeah, well, y'all have a great day.
They have been so far. Tennessee walking man? Yeah, Tennessee walking man. You got it. Yeah. Have a good day. Bro. All right, you too. Uh, on your journey, you will meet people of all ethnicities, all racial genres. You're going to meet people who will believe in what you're doing. Those who think that you're, you're literally crazy for walking mm -hmm. to try to meet and learn people. But it's going to be an experience that you will never, ever forget. You're starting on a great day so that you can walk the countryside to learn how people really think, what people really believe, and what is their vision for themselves, for their families, and for their city, state, and or country. It's important. And as I'll say this to you three, as you walk this, this journey, every man has to have a vision. If a man doesn't have a vision for himself, he can't have a vision for his children, for his wife, for his family, for his community, for his home, for his city, state, then his country. Without a vision, we perish. This is the center of the United States, and this is where the core can be. I like to say Tennessee is God's unspoken heaven on earth, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Hiking All the way to Mountain City. Mountain City. It's northeast of Johnson City. God, that's a wild, isn't it? Sure is. Yeah. We're going all the way across the state. Just mm -hmm. walking. No rides, just walking. No rides. Well, we take rides if someone's offering a place for us to sleep. Then they drop us back off on our route and we keep walking from where they pick us up. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, yeah, no hitchhiking or nothing like that. Why? We're making a movie about Tennessee. How are you? Yeah, I have a little little uh, plaid skirts with my little socks on and my little penny loafers, my little fair faucet hairdo with my monogram and my little butt down and stuff. And, and he would take me out to Campground Road where these bikers would be lined up and down. All these bikes would be lined up and down the road. And he would introduce me, he's like, this is my little cousin Sandy, you touch her, you die. <laughs> and it was great. And the cops uh, beat him to death out in front of his own establishment because he was against the man. Uh, well, people used to ask, you know, where are you from when I would travel off and go places? And I'd say, well, my parents and their parents and their parents and their parents and their parents were all Wicklow Countyans. So I lived all from the time I was three till my senior year. My dad moves back to Dresden, where he's the principal of my school. And um, 85, at least 85% of the school came to me and introduced my set themselves as my cousin. And I was like, oh my gosh, dating's going to really be a bitch. <laughs> it's going to be really hard. <laughs> really, really hard. I left Florida because of the crowds, the influence, and the drugs. I'm not going to hide about drugs. Everybody did drugs sooner or later. But I've been clean for going on eight, ten years now. And I'm glad about that. Come here. Come here. Come on, sit down. You're going to get your picture took. That's a good girl. I've lived alone for going on nine years, been celibate for nine years, don't miss a woman, love women, 
but I can do without them. That's me. And I'm sorry that I didn't know about Tennessee earlier. Hey, shit happens, right? <laughs> Sunshine, come here. Come here, baby. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. That's a good baby. I'm trying to think of something to shoot. Can or anything? Right here. Oh, yeah. This just water. Come on, say. If it okay. can stay on there, probably won't. No. Well, still shoot it. Uh, you know, if you come into Tennessee with the idea that uh, you want to be by yourself, you want to, you know, you just want to do your thing, you won't be left alone, all that, buddy, they'll let you. I mean, they'll let you be alone, real alone. My name's Lowell. <laughs> no, I'm just, uh, I'm just an old man. I live off the land. <laughs> Got kind of paranoid. Moved back to Tennessee. And bought a farm. been uh, living quote unquote organically ever since. I've, I've worked in long term working jobs for in 17, 17 foreign countries in 38 states. Uh, people are the same everywhere, all over the world. You have people that are honorable, you have people that are dishonorable, you have people that are religious, you have people that are not religious. You have people with character, you have people with no character. I don't know how to start a fire. I reckon they all do. <laughs> huh? All right, we need to get a fire going under this kettle. And then just keep, when you get it started, just keep putting wood around it. Let me go start with some knives. I don't really buy into this. The, the thought that you know these people are better than these people or these people have a different now, there are difference in logic the reason people reason differently because of where they've been raised or the way they've been raised and so their reasoning is different maybe it ain't just a rooster but the basics uh, treating each other and stuff like that people are the same everywhere it's a good place to live. Tennessee's it's hard to beat. I've been all over. Oh, you, you come out here and you cook out here. In the summertime, you do all you can, in, all you cooking, eating, everything out here. There's no place like, no place like it for it. I'm concerned for what I want to do and the way I want to live. No blood. Lots of different kinds of Tennesseans. I'm an eighth, I'm a seventh generation Tennessee, which is a person my age. That's about as many generations as you can have, unless you're a Native American. My grandson, who we baptized in a creek on Saturday uh, in East Tennessee, is a ninth generation Tennessee. I think a Tennessean is, uh, for the most part, a cultural conservative, somebody whose lifestyle and beliefs are pretty rooted to the ground and usually to the religious faith and with respect for other people and, and willing to tolerate a lot of differences among other people. I think Tennesseans are independent in the sense that they want to be left alone and they'll, they'll leave you alone too. If you want to live a little differently or be a little different, that's all right.
How's it going? Here we go. Someone said, huh? What you filming for? Uh, we're making a documentary, walking across the state. Yeah. You can always get the crack houses and stuff going out there. <laughs> <laughs> that would make some uh, some interesting footage. Oh, there's been a bunch of them playing here in Florida. Yeah. Are you looking for people or? You're just meeting folks along the way, different places that we haven't been before. We're all from Tennessee, but yeah. we're from I'm from Memphis, and Tim's from Nashville, and Michael's from Murfreesboro, and he's lived in Chattanooga, and we both lived in Knoxville, but we don't know anything about the, the other parts of the state. Yeah. Hey, y'all, y'all tapped all the bad spots. Y'all <laughs> come over and look at Lillian. Yeah. Nashville ain't no place to mess around in, and Chattanooga ain't no place to mess around in. Yeah. Murph, bro, if you learn about gangs, there's a place to go. <laughs> I've been all over. I thought about leaving here just because the bull, but hell, it's, it's bad everywhere. Yeah. I don't know. I'm one of the people who believes born at the wrong time. <laughs> Oh, it's been just fine. I started out this morning cleaning the deer, so that's always a good day. Yeah. You know, a buddy of mine brought me over about a, well, about a 90 pound deer. Just really tender, good eating. This is, this is kind of considered the crank, cook cap in, uh, uh, crank cooking capital of America, supposedly. That's what these people around here tell me. Mm -hmm. The big yellow boy that we had before this black boy, he was as big as this guy is, and they were throwing him in pits, and they were they, they busted his nose, they, uh, they they hobbled his feet and beat the bottom of his feet until his feet were so swelled up they actually split open, and they pumped him full of crank. And if the dogs live through it, then they know they can sell it. They shot him four or five different times. Uh, there was one time I carried him into the vet where his whole whole leg like this, all the skin was just hanging down over his paw. Mm. And uh, I thought maybe a cougar or something had tore him up, or a lynx yeah. or something. And the, the vet said no, so he pulled BBs out of him and he shot, they shot him. Oh, man. You know what? The ghost might do some whoopie doos on them. <coughs> Beautiful in here. Well, and that's because I redid it. I don't know if you noticed all them piles out there, but that's not just garbage. That's mm -hmm. really building material. Yeah, We're going to add a room on it. Oh, nice. You know, just like but we see, did I'll this make one. two of these. Yeah. It needs to be framed. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this one here, you were talking about time. You know, just like takes. Oh, really I don't know. Depends yeah. if I'm dinking around or, you know, if I'm focused. Well, so this one, how, how long do you think this one took? 150 hours. Yeah, over here in the corner. I pulled yours out. I'll say 150. Uh, I mean, you, you give some of these away? Uh, just sometimes. I, I've even given them to assholes just because they need to pray. They need to remember that they're not all that. You know? Um, anyways. I, I, I do prefer the cool colors. I'm going to put it away though. Probably yeah, of course. Break it. I made that. Yeah. Well, see, here's a better view of the coke ovens. Yeah, these these are you can see the the intensity of the heat when you get up here and look inside these, because it's actually smooth from the heat. Because they're burning the coal down to get the coke out of the coal. And this was all done slave labor. These were all done by black people that were slaves. But look at that, how hot that had to be. Can you imagine doing this all day long? Just working in this intense heat. They're digging the coal out of here, and then they're cooking it off in here, and they're cooking the coke out of it. That a hill over here that they call, they actually call it Nigger Hill. And that's where they actually, the black people used to walk up there. And there, and there was different times when they actually had black people hanging from the trees. That's where they found their family, their loved ones as they were walking home. They were just hanging from the trees. You know, yeah, my home is here. I've lived here, I've paid my home off. But do I really feel at home? No, you know. But even where I grew up, I never really did. 
So I you know, probably never really belonged anywhere, but I guess if I belong anywhere, it's, I own this property now, I guess if I, I feel like if I belong somewhere, it's probably here. But the people don't accept us very much. You know, they think we're, they think I'm a northerner. And they, they're really clannish around here, and they, they really are. And they, they kind of, they treat both my wife and I like that. You know, and it doesn't matter uh, how she has bobbled back and forth between Florida and Minnesota. Um, I've spent more time away from Minnesota than I've spent in Minnesota, so I don't feel like I'm really from Minnesota. I was just born there, you know. But uh, but no, we're we're not really accepted here, no. Everybody that you meet, even for a moment, instead of adding to the burden of fear, lightening somehow that burden. And now I will shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who am I? Um, my name is Renee, and I was born in Hollywood. Grew up uh, first few years in a in a lobby, Art Deco rug, uh, grand piano, couches. Old, old vaudeville people all dressed up and ready to go back to work sitting on the couches with their scrapbooks. Those dear people who kept waiting for the next thing that they hung their lives on and they lived in rooms in a hotel and no one ever came and they just, everything was in there, who they once were and what they once done was there. And I had some sort of sense that I could I couldn't, I could have turned out like that. That may have been where I was headed. I was commuting back and forth writing here with a couple of my best co-writers had moved to Tennessee. And I got sick of the commute from LA enough to say, well, I'm just gonna buy a little writer's place here. And that was that. That was just it. I sat on the swing underneath an oak tree that's gone now. And I thought, oh. And it went back to when I was a little, little girl and my great-grandparents who'd come over from Romania had a farm. And I remembered all of it. It was right here. This, this place has, has taken care of everything for me. This is becoming so different from what I thought it would be. How so? I knew, I knew we were going to try and not make it like an anthropology study. But I guess I thought it would be more like that. I mean, what we talked about before, and that it's gotten, it's been really easy to get uh, personal with people quickly. I think it's just been more um, emotionally intense than I thought it would be originally. Especially once things kind of start started to get going. Um, it has been, it's been a lot more like, like a lot of reflective time and a lot of, um, a lot of emotion. 
What questions have you been asking yourself? Well, just like the things, like where my life is right now and how I got to this point and decisions that I've made. Oh, you giving me a shot, are you? <laughs> Walking? Walking, yeah. I, I used to, I used to walk to work and I thought I was a walking champion. But uh, <laughs> from the route that you took, I don't know where I was doing any good at all. Now. You want him to do a little yodeling for you? A little yodeling. Yodeling. Can you do something yodeling. to yodel for him? Yodeling, Matt. Yeah. He's going to he's gonna make a little video on here I'm, and record I, it. I, I am, I'm, 80, I'm 82 years old. I'm about lived out and about yodeled out. But I'm going to try to do a little something for you. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to. So I'm going to try to describe myself and my feelings with the song that I wrote about Tennessee. And this is my song. Hills, mountains, and valleys With clear water streams Reflecting the beauty Of the state that I love so A forest of crops and grazing It is my heart that I see Yes, it's part of Dixie in my home, Tennessee. Tennessee River flowing from Mosul Shore across old Kentucky and into the Ohio. Many times I've ridden on you, but never Your clear flowing water makes me get lost and dream. That's about as close as I can describe it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, it's very good. Excellent. Are you going to eat your burger ever? I'm going to eat it. going to film until it's cold. But then it won't be spicy anymore. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> uh, I guess it was like a year ago. I was kind of manic at the time. I got home one day and I was like, Mom, I've decided that if I can find my bike, because my boyfriend like left it on his mom's porch and somebody stole it, this that's a completely different story. But it's like I'm gonna walk across the USA, or at least across Georgia, or so, or I'm gonna walk down the road. I'm gonna walk, and so I started packing my bags and stuff. <laughs> I packed an atlas and some ramen noodles and you know like like the little tiny cereal boxes and, and I was like I am set I am go and the next day I was in the hospital and spent like six weeks in a mental institution <laughs> Because they thought I was crazy. Well, I, I was kind of crazy at the time, but I'm really jealous of you guys. That's why I, I, I told them, I was like, when they leave, I'm going to. I'm going with them. Do they know? Uh, yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah.
this is well, up until about 10 years ago, this was really a rural uh, part of the part of Tennessee. And actually, I can remember when we had what you'd call a hillbillies. Uh, this was one time called Shotgun County because there's so much trouble up in here. You know, it, actually what it was, it was a moonshining community. And those moonshiners get after one another with guns. And so, you know, but uh, it, uh, that's been, gee whiz. That's been 60 years ago, I guess, when it, when that was all happening. This is they, there's not a whole lot of business in County County. It's mostly rural, farmland and stuff like that. It's gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. You know, sometimes you get so used to it, though, you ignore it. I know uh, when I was still working, I went into work one fall morning, and one of the guys said. Man, said it's so beautiful up there. I went up there over the weekend. It's so beautiful. Well, I hadn't noticed, but then that afternoon I got to looking at it. You know, he's right. <laughs> this road is Star Mountain Road. It's spelled with one R. That goes to Star Mountain. It's spelled with two R's. <laughs> you go up the mountain. It's Tally. It's Tally Mountain, and there's a fork. And to the right used to be Tally Pike. To the left used to be Fingerboard Road, but when they put the sign up, for some reason or other, somebody got confused and they changed. And when they put the road sign up, it was backwards, so they changed everybody's address. <laughs> I've had four what? addresses here and I ain't moved. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I moved up up here in uh, '95. Okay. I moved to Tennessee. It was in '88. I'm originally from Maryland. Went from Maryland to Florida for a while, and to McDonald, Tennessee, and then up here. I hated Florida because there's two seasons, bug and tourist. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I had a 69 Ford van and a trailer, and we just loaded everything that we did, couldn't sell, literally, in the thing, and just headed this away. And stopped at a KOA in McDonald, stayed there for about a uh, week and a half, two weeks, and got a job running a house and just stayed. Grew up in East Tennessee, South Knoxville, not just Knoxville, but South Knoxville, major distinction. Loved East Tennessee, first job out of school, we moved to Florida, worked there for several years as an environmental scientist. Like two of my favorite campsites and uh, people don't use them so much because they have to walk down the hill. Like Lived on our sailboat, <laughs> absolutely loved it, but couldn't wait to get back home. But I um, was fortunate we came back when we did, kids are like four and six and both mine and Marty's fathers um, got cancer about the same time and died within a year of each other, actually within about six months. I didn't know if we were gonna stay here forever, you know, it was just another one of my wacky experiments, you know, of let's get into log cabins, let's do all this, and but now we're here, you know, it's kinda grown on me, I don't really care to leave. You know, when you start burying your pets here, <laughs> then you can't walk away from them, so yeah, I think this is home say it's where we're at for a while it's just such a short run you know it's like a friend of mine i think he was like 55 58 something when he was like you know life is like your gas tank when you go fill it up it seems like it stays on full forever and then it starts dropping you know it's to three quarter and you're like oh it moved then it gets to half and then after that it just drops off sort of seems like life you know I mean it takes forever when you're young you know you think oh I can do everything and then you start realizing well there's a there's a empty down there somewhere you know and you start realizing it and it comes on pretty quick to be perfectly honest
Still can't accept that we're going to be done in like an hour and a half, and we don't have any more walking to do. When you were talking about this year and how much you liked ending it this way, it made me reflect on this year and how the first three months was a trail crew I was running, or the second half of that crew. And then I had like a month or two to go see friends in the south. Then I ran another crew. And then I got ready for this and did this. Spent quite a while not having like a normal, I mean, a day job and all that kind of stuff. So, sometimes I get a little scared when we talk about getting an apartment and editing. Because I don't know if I know how to do that. <laughs> like. weird. It's very weird. Our finish point somewhere up there. thinking about what my uncle told me when we were at his house. I don't think you guys were around. He was just like, you know, talk to me when all this is over. I think he had like a sense of like when this traveling nonsense. Something like that. And it doesn't really end. 